It's Christmas Day 2007, and two kids from Ohio are opening presents. Their dad bought them a handheld Sony video camera so they could film themselves playing football. Little did the father know on that day it would be this device that would make his kids into millionaires. They started making funny skits, and 15 years later, these two boys have a combined net worth of $65 million. Those boys were YouTube sensations Logan and Jake Paul. This is the story of the older brother, Logan Paul, and how making stupid videos made him stupidly rich and successful. It's quite fitting that one of the world's most famous pranksters was born on April Fool's Day. Logan was born in Westlake, Ohio on April 1st, 1995. Their father was a realtor while his mother stayed as a housewife. Logan is of English, German, Irish, Welsh, Scottish, and Jewish descent. While this video is focusing on Logan, it's impossible to tell Logan's story without mentioning his little brother, Jake. They both lived a relatively happy childhood. However, their parents got divorced when they were quite young. In fact, Jake can remember very little about his parents being together. Nonetheless, both of their parents managed to make things work. It was when they were given a camera that they started goofing around and making videos. One of Logan's earlier videos involves him calling up a restaurant and telling them that his name was Mike Butsky. It's clear that this sense of humor hasn't changed much since then. Making silly videos was something Logan would continue doing throughout his teens, as well as making funny videos. He also excelled as an athlete both in football and wrestling. Logan was living a fairly straightforward American life. He went to college and studied engineering at Ohio State University. However, it was while attending Ohio State University that things would change forever. In 2013, Twitter launched Vine. This platform allowed people to make six second videos and was an incredibly popular platform. Although six second videos seem quite limited, it allowed Logan to focus on condensing his humor into short and instantly funny videos. He was wrestling in the supermarket, climbing on the subway handrails like a monkey, and getting into strangers' cars. It was like the Mike Buttsky prank, but about 10% more mature. In July 2013, he had around 900 followers on Vine, whereas four months later, he had 1.5 million. His success with this app courted the attention of many advertisers. Games publisher Ubisoft paid him $1,000 to create a Vine for its Just Dance series. Other advertisers soon came calling, including Pepsi, HBO, and Dunkin' Donuts. Not only was Logan getting famous, he was also making money out of it too. It was time that he turned his hobby into a full-time career. The safe and steady career in engineering was thrown out the window. The wild and wonderful world of fame was chosen instead. In 2014, Logan dropped out of college and moved to LA. He moved into an apartment complex fittingly called 1600 Vine. He signed up to an agency and he was also taking acting classes. Vine would be the platform to launch his career, but he soon branched out into other areas. Alongside Vine, he was also busy building his YouTube channel. He started posting short films, vlogs, and even music videos on his platform. However, his music is not meant to be taken seriously and is more of an extension of his comedy. It was also in 2014 when Paul met one of his best buddies, Mike Malak. Mike worked for the furniture company Lovesack and wanted to do some sponsorship deals with the company. This was the start of a bromance which would become pivotal in Logan's later career. Any Logan fans will know Mike as co-host of Paul's Impulsive podcast. He was incredibly popular online and was finally given an opportunity on traditional media. In 2015, he made a cameo appearance on the TV show Law & Order Special Victims Unit. His movement away from Vine could not have come at a better time. In 2016, Twitter simply shut down the app. Vine was no more. He was now forced to focus on longer and more interesting work. He released music videos, including The Fall of Jake Paul, which featured the boy band Why Don't We, and Hero, which featured the YouTuber Zircon. He also appeared in the Awesomeness TV web series titled Foursome. He also starred in the movie The Thinning, which was launched on YouTube Red. In this movie, Logan starred as a person inhabiting a world which has become overpopulated, and there is a thinning of the population to cope. The movie was critically panned, but commercially successful. In 2017, his channel was the fifth fastest growing on YouTube. He became the 50th most subscribed at the end of the year and was the youngest person on that list. He also achieved mainstream success with his song, 
Help Me Help You and the revamp of the Baywatch movie where it got to star alongside his wrestling hero, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. 2017 was also when he had a falling out with his brother. Jake released a diss track where he roasted his ex-girlfriend Alyssa as well as other YouTubers such as PewDiePie. Logan decided to release his own song dissing his own brother. The video also showed Alyssa and Logan together. Fans were suspicious of whether they had really fallen or whether it was a publicity stunt. Whether or not the video is real, both brothers were now incredibly successful. 2017 was also the year that Logan bought a home in LA for $6.55 million. He was going from success to success and there was simply no stopping him, but it was in 2018 that Logan's career nearly ended and the dream almost died. Logan Paul is in some hot water. I think he's water. a complete and utter insensitive idiot. You're seeing the fallout after posting a video that showed the body of an apparent suicide victim. Video viewed over 6 million times in just 24 hours. On New Year's Eve 2017, Logan uploaded a video of him visiting the suicide forest. This is a forest in Japan, which is a popular spot for committing suicide. On the thumbnail of this video, an image of someone hanging themselves could even be seen in the background. At first, the video seemed like an innocent foray into dark tourism. The video even began with advice to people who have mental health issues. However, as Logan walked through the forest, he found a corpse. The camera zoomed in and Logan began making funny remarks. It was disgusting behavior, and he was rightfully condemned. On the other side, many have argued that his jokes were used as a coping mechanism to deal with the shock of seeing a dead body. Whatever the case, the decision to post a video which trivialized someone taking their own life was a step way too far. Logan had been constantly pushing the boundaries of what could be considered funny, and this time, he really crossed the line. Logan had an incredibly young and impressionable audience, so many felt that he was setting an incredibly bad example. The hate Logan received afterwards was unimaginable. In an interview with Good Morning America, Logan said, It's been tough because, ironically, I'm being told to commit suicide myself. Millions of people literally tell me they hate me to go die in a fire. The most horrible, horrific things. Logan apologized on two occasions, but it wasn't enough. Soon, Pepsi pulled out of its sponsorship deal, his merch sales had drastically dropped, he was pulled from Google Preferred, Vine's sequel, Vine 2, had also banned him from the app, Logan had become good friends with Breaking Bad star Aaron Paul, but after the video, he tweeted, You disgust me. I can't believe that so many young people look up to you. So sad. Hopefully, this latest video woke them up. Behind the scenes, people were also distancing themselves from him. It was later revealed that Dwayne Johnson asked him to remove every one of their photos of them together. The reputational damage from this video transcended beyond just Logan. Logan had launched a clothing line called Maverick with Logan Paul. The clothing line, which was also called Maverick, took legal action against Paul as they were apparently losing sales because they were mistakenly associated with Paul. It was even affecting his brother's career too. Jake wasn't even able to get any work because of the actions of his brother. I was basically blackballed for 18 months from the industry, Jake told HBO Real Sports. No auditions, no brand deals, no sponsorships. It was one of the worst moments of my life. A few months later, things got even worse. He posted a video of himself tasering two rats. He also caught a fish and then started performing CPR on it. People had signaled him out as the villain and he was simply going to play up to it. This led YouTube to demonetize his platform. For many, it seemed that Logan Paul was finished. It was at this moment that Logan learned who his real friends were. While most of Logan's so-called friends had distanced themselves from him, he still had a close buddy he could rely on. Mike Malak didn't abandon him during this tough time and wanted to assist him with his recovery. Mike is 10 years older than him and became a real mentor to him. Logan would normally post anything he thought was funny, but he hired Mike to become a filter and decide which videos he should put out. Logan wanted to make things right. He announced that he would be donating $1 million to suicide prevention organizations. He would also help become an advocate for suicide prevention. This received mixed reception. Was Logan genuinely sorry for what he had done, or was he just trying to keep a hold of what was left of his career? In July that year, he did an interview with Casey Neistat to explain himself. He literally told him in that interview about his plans to redeem himself. 
I think America in general, they love redemption stories. My life is now a story about someone who's winning, someone who self-imploded and, like I said, was the artifact of their own destruction and struggle vulnerability. To keep his mind focused on something else, Logan started boxing. In this sport, he can escape from the crazy world he now inhabited and keep himself focused on something else than social media. Speaking to ESPN, Logan said boxing allowed me to breathe for a second, to focus on personal, physical, mental growth, human growth, not subscriber growth. In February 2018, British YouTuber KSI defeated Joe Weller in a boxing match. In his victory speech, KSI called out the Paul brothers and wanted to challenge any one of them. Beef went back and forth between the Paul brothers and KSI and his brother Deji. Eventually, it was announced that KSI and Logan would be fighting one-on-one -on -one in the ring. The fight turned out to be incredibly even. Two judges scored the fight even at 57-57, and the third judge scored it 58-57 in favor of KSI. Naturally, when a boxing match is this close, a rematch is scheduled. KSI won again, but again, it was by a close margin. Towards the end of 2018, Logan also launched his own podcast, Impulsive. Logan started the podcast with Mike Majlak, and we got to see their beautiful friendship up close. Podcasts also allowed his fans to get to know him a bit more. And the people who judged him on the Japan video could see that he's not as bad as he seems. Fellow Vine star George Janko has also co-hosted the podcast. By 2019, things had changed. His channel was still successful, he had heaps of adoring fans, but he still had a lot of people who hated his guts too. During this year, he paid $1 million for an 80-acre property called Phobes Ranch in the San Jacinto Mountains. This gave him some peace and quiet and allowed him to escape from the crazy world he found himself in. But it's very difficult for Logan to keep a low profile and he soon caused controversy again. In 2019 on his podcast, he stated that he was going to go gay for the month of March as part of Male Only March. This courted controversy from the LGBTQ community as it implied that being gay was a choice. He later apologized about this, but it seemed that Logan was still causing unnecessary controversy and creating outrage to stay relevant. It was in 2020 when Paul had really redeemed himself. His speech after the killing of George Floyd was him showing a level of empathy and maturity that we simply hadn't seen before. On his podcast, he said, I'm embarrassed that it's taken me 25 years to realize this. It's not enough to not be a racist. You have to be anti-racist. Make your voice heard, attend a protest, speak up against injustice. If you're white, if you look like me, use your privilege. For those who do not think white privilege exists, you're effing blind. You are delusional. 2020 also saw the release of the movie Valley Girl. The release of this movie was delayed due to Paul's controversy and due to COVID-19, the movie went straight to streaming services. Again, this movie was critically panned, but relatively popular. A year later, Logan's wrestling career began. He appeared on an episode of WWE SmackDown as a guest star of Sami Zayn. He was also at ringside with Zayn at WrestleMania 37 for his match against Kevin Owens. He finally appeared in the ring in February 2022 where he was revealed as the Miz's tag team partner. They wrestled Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio, but lost the game. To make things worse, Miz attacked Paul after the game. Paul also decided that despite his inability to beat YouTuber KSI, he was going to fight one of the greatest boxers of all time, Floyd Mayweather. It should come as no surprise that Logan lost, but it was closer than everyone expected. Logan also made $5.25 million from the fight alone. However, one year on, Logan has not received any money at all from the fight. Logan called out Mayweather on this, and Mayweather later explained on the Pivot podcast that being comes right away, I'm still collecting checks from fights seven or eight years ago. They just hate when the table is turned. Be happy with the biggest payday you ever got in your life. Whether Logan will end up taking legal action, time will tell. In 2022, Logan's pretty much back on top. He's recently started the Prime Squad, which is a group of YouTube creators led by himself and, surprisingly enough, KSI. The popular YouTuber Jay Dion is also now confirmed as a member. Prime is the name of a new beverage the two have launched together, which sold 10 million bottles in the first three months since its launch. Logan currently has a net worth of $35 million and earns $11 million through his YouTube channels. His company, Maverick, has generated more than $40 million in sales, as well as the wealth of houses, cars, and jewelry. 
Logan has one of the most expensive Pokemon collections in the world. He broke the Guinness World Record for the most expensive Pokemon trade when he acquired the highly coveted PSA Grade 10 Pikachu Illustrator card for $5,275,000. Only nine of them exist in the world. Four years on from his potentially career-ending disaster, it seems that Logan isn't going away anytime soon. More importantly, he's learned from his mistakes and is using his platform and popularity for good. He's far from perfect, but continues to learn and grow every day. But however mature he becomes, hopefully he still doesn't lose that goofy sense of humor we all know and love. And that just about brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe. We're always looking for ideas to make some videos, so feel free to make some suggestions in the comments. Should we make a video about Logan's brother Jake, or perhaps one about his arch nemesis, KSI? We're excited to hear your thoughts.